Hello, this is Dr. Jeffrey Miller from Baltimore, Maryland. Today I'd like to talk about using cone beam CT to evaluate orthodontically induced dehiscence and fenestration. Now, there seems to be quite a bit of confusion as to what the literature says about diagnosing dehiscence and fenestration using cone beam CT. So in this uh, short presentation, I'd like to maybe offer a possible explanation to what we're uh, seen in the literature and what does it uh, mean clinically. My name is Jeffrey Miller. I graduated from Towson University, received my dental education at University of Maryland, my orthodontic certificate at SUNY Buffalo, my board certification in 1991. I've been in private practice in Maryland for over 35 years, and I speak both nationally and internationally on Combeam CT topics uh, related to orthodontics. I'm also a member of these organizations. I guess the question really comes down to, is the 0.6 millimeters of non-visible bone relevant to orthodontic treatment evaluations? In other words, can you di diagnose orthodontically induced dehiscence and fenestration using a cone beam CT? For the purpose of this talk, we'll assume that the 0.6 millimeters of non-visible bone is uh, accurate. Now, there's there's a whole discussion on that as well, but let's assume that it's a, it's accurate. And what does that mean to us in terms of clinical practice? You know, I hear this 0. 0.6 millimeters thrown around all over the place, and I I really believe for the most part, it's it's used as a rationalization for violation of the alveolar housing. In other words, you take a cone beam post-active orthodontic treatment, and you see the roots have been pushed halfway out of the alveolar housing, and the rationalization is, or it goes something like, well, 0.6 millimeters of bone uh, is still there because uh, studies show that the combi CT this, uh, causes the, the portion of the bone that's there to be invisible. But what does that really mean? I think it's necessary to talk about the accuracy of gummy CT in measure, measuring not only the, the dehiscence of fenestration, but actually to measure the, the anatomy or the, the size and shape of the alveolar housing. So this is a slide uh, that I got from Gerald Nelson. Unfortunately, this was a 19-year-old girl that was killed in a automobile accident. And this is the on the right is the dry skull section of the autopsy, and on the left is the combi CT of that dry skull section. So when you look at this and uh, you ask yourself, does this accurately represent the alveolar uh, anatomy and the relationship between the tooth roots and the alveolar housing? And the answer, of course, is, is yes. There's no way of looking at it and saying, oh, well, there's 0.6 millimeters of bone covering these roots. So what does the literature actually say? I mean, there's, there's plenty of uh, refereed scientific literature now that discusses uh, how accurate cone beam CT is in terms of especially orthodontic evaluations. And as I said, we're gonna assume that 0.6 millimeters of bone may not be visible using cone beam CT. When you look at these studies, I think they're they're kind of missing the point somewhat in that some of them use the 3D reconstructions uh, to measure the, the accuracy of cone beam CT in measuring the bone. And the 3D reconstructions, that's not where the diagnosis occurs. I mean, it's a, it's a nice thing to play with and to look at structures relative to each other. But the 3D reconstruction is not accurate in measuring bone. It just, it's not a tool for that. You have to look at the individual slices. Then some of the studies only used the sagittal view to make the measurements. And, you know, with cone beam, you have to look at multi, multi planar views. You have to look at not only the sagittal, but the axial and the coronal views. And you have to stitch those three views together to get an accurate representation of what is actually going on there. But I think the biggest misconception uh, that this 0.6 millimeters of bone kind of implies 
is related to the studies are not done on orthodontically treated patients. These are not cases that have orthodontically induced dehiscence. These are cases that have naturally occurring dehiscence, which are generally much smaller in magnitude than what would have occur occurred through orthodontic or poor orthodontic treatment. So when you look at these naturally occurring dehiscence and fenestration, you can see it's just a little tiny window of root uh, popping through. And if you compare the, the mesial and the distal roots of this first molar here, you can kind of can kind of appreciate that on a cone beam CT, the difference between the distal and the mesial root may not be apparent, you know, abundantly clear. So here we have an untreated patient, and if we look at this patient's cuspids, you know, is there a dehiscence of fenestration uh, associated with these cuspids from the axial view? Maybe, maybe not. Does it matter clinically is really the question. And I'm not sure that, uh, you know, when you have a tooth that's relatively surrounded by good bone, but some of the, the, the edge may look like it has disappeared, I'm not sure that really matters clinically. Because when we're talking about dehiscence and fenestration associated with orthodontic treatment, we're talking about a much more significant magnitude where the 0.6 millimeter, you can't look at this, this dehisced lower incisor and say, well, there's 0.6 millimeters of bone here, nor could you look at any of these other images and say that. So does that 6.6 .6 millimeters of bone give you a universal license to dehiss the, the teeth through the cortical plane and say, well, there's, there's 0.6 millimeters of bone there, so I'm okay. So when you look at a tooth like this, and you this tooth, you can see where the cortical plate ends is a very high quality slice. You can't just assume that because there's six millimeters of bone missing that it, the bone alveolar housing looks like this versus something like this, where you have, you know, dehiscence associated with that root. So when you are, when you're to look at this, and here's another one, this is an Invisalign case, and you see a root like this, and you try to rationalize it by saying that there's 0.6 millimeters there, you know, I don't believe that the six millimeters really makes that much difference in a case that has been dehissed to this kind of magnitude. So I think the discussion is really all about magnitude of the dehiscence. And, and additionally, you need to look at it from a multiplanar view to really evaluate, you know, what that what that uh, support for that tooth is or is not. And here you can see the apex of that uh, root. I guess the slice was taken down here somewhere. Is is up de detached to the argue that, and I've seen this actually in talks. You know, to argue that well, it's okay because there's 0.6 millimeters of of, of bone that you can't see as if that means there is bone there, I think is wrong. And I think from those studies, here's the study from Sun, you know, that when you're looking at the hissons and fenestrations, uh, if it's a more, if the magnitude's higher, in this case, if there was a severe dehiscence, then uh, those were, were pretty accurately diagnosed. And let's take a look at a case where this is a 39-year-old female patient with and topically erupted lower left cuspid. So if we look at the difference between the lower right and left cuspids, that's the left and the right. I mean, clearly the 0.6 millimeters doesn't mean much here. We're here, this tooth, you could say maybe there's bone there, maybe there isn't. And I'm not sure that it makes that much clinical difference because when you look at something of this magnitude, and here we know the tissue is dehissed as well, that six millimeter argument doesn't mean a whole lot. So it all has to do with the magnitude of the dehiscence in our orthodontic cases. And when you start looking at some of these types of orthodontic treatment that use uh, you know, a non-extraction expansion approach and then you look at the post-treatment cone beam CTs where you have a generalized dehiscence where all these teeth 
you know, look like the half or a third of the root is pushed out of the alveolar vessel. To say that, well, it's okay because there's 0.6 millimeters of bone that's not visible, I don't think is a, is a reasonable argument. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, you can email me at drmiller at orthodonticassess.com. Thanks very much for your time.